Let's talk about GPT function calling. I think of GPT as this kind of brain that's floating out there in the cloud somewhere, and you can talk to it. You can talk to it through apps like ChatGPT, but you can also write code that talks to it through, uh, through the API. So GPT functions um, were a recent addition, which are, well, they're, they're super useful, but a little bit hard to wrap your head around sometimes. So I hope this video will make it crystal clear and you'll understand what it is and what you can use it for. So we're going to be doing some code examples. So here's our basic scaffolding, right? Uh, some JavaScript, um, OpenAI key comes in there. Uh, we select a model there, and then we ask GPT this question, and we log the answer. So let's try it. There we go. There's our generic, long, <laughs> boring AI answer, but it's working. So the question is, what if we write something like this? Is it raining in Stockholm? So there we go. We get a long answer, basically boiling down to Screw you. <laughs> no, I will not do this. In fact, let's actually ask it to make short answers. There we go. That's a short answer. <laughs> I don't know. So the reason for this is, of course, because of the sandbox, right? By default, GPT cannot access the internet or access your file system or access your email or anything really, which is probably for the better. Functions are really cool because they basically allow you to increase the capabilities of GPT, basically giving it like a tool. So let's say I'm asking, is it raining in Stockholm? Then I can include, hey, by the way, there's a function called get weather. And then GPT will say, oh, really? Well, I would like to, I would like to, I'd like to use that function. And then I tell GPT, so the function returned this. And then GPT can can give me the actual answer. So let's actually try this in code. Here we send the message, right? Is it raining in Stockholm? How do we tell GPT that there is a function available? Well, if we look at the documentation. Um, in the request body, you can include a list of functions that are available. And this is one of those things that, like in, in many cases, I would just tell GPT, write the code, and it'd be done. But at the time of GPT's cutoff, uh, it didn't have this information. This, this came later. So GPT doesn't actually know this stuff. You can give GPT this link and tell it to figure it out. But for the purpose of learning, I'll actually just look at the docs and show you where you can find it, and then uh, we'll actually write the code. So uh, we're going to add functions here. And that's where we define which functions we have. So what I'm putting here is a specification. I'm sh I'm telling it about my function, and it uses the JSON schema reference. Um, and I cobbled together um, a simple example of that by just looking around um, at the example code on the OpenAI um, documentation site, and ended up with this. The function's name is weather. It gets the current weather for city. This part is important, by the way. Because GPT uses this to determine when it should use the function or not. These are the properties it takes, and it takes one parameter called city, which is a string. Maybe this is redundant. I don't know. <laughs> and here we say that city is, in fact, required. So this is a function definition, in a sense. And we're sending it to GPT and saying, this is actually available for you. Now let's see what happens if we, if we call GPT. This is interesting, right? Look what happened. We got an answer, but no content in the answer. Instead, we get this thing, function call. Uh, it wants to call a function called weather, which we said exists, and it wants to send in the arguments city Stockholm. So what's happening now is exactly this right here. It's saying, hey, I want to call this function called get weather. So let's uh, update our code and actually uh, do it. So it's important to note that GPT isn't actually executing that function. It is asking us to execute it and then send back the response. So let's actually create it. Fast forward a little bit, and um, I basically asked GPT to create a get weather function for me. So open weather map um, is, a, is, some, is a third party API, which you can use to check weather. And uh, let's see how the output looks like. There we go. A pile of JSON describing the weather conditions in London. So back to the code. We ran this thing before and we have GPT telling us, could you please uh, make a function call to weather with these parameters? Okay, so here's some code for that. Response message, function call, we're basically parsing this and we're look, we're noticing that, oh, it wants to call the weather function and then we're parsing the arguments and we're passing that on to our function. Let's see if it works. Yep, GPT asked me to call weather for city Stockholm and indeed, here's the result. So we did that, we did this, we did that, and now we're about to do this. We're about to give the result back to GPT. So here, um, call GPT and give it the weather, right? The weather data. And that means we're going to do something like this again, right? We're going to call GPT. And to avoid duplicating this code, because we do want to keep the chat history, um, you know, send that back to GPT, I'll just do a quick refactor and we'll put that into an array. So those are our messages. And we're going to just keep adding to this kind of, this is our, this is our, our, our chat history essentially, right? So we'll also add 
the response message to those messages. And then we can just kind of keep adding to this chat. So what we want to do now is we want to add more to it. I want to create an additional message. And what's actually going on here? Let's let's look at this, right? We sent a system message saying you give short answers. We sent a user message asking if it's raining in Stockholm. Uh, we, we got a response where it asked to call a function. And now we're sending a message with the role function. And this is a bit buried in the, in the documentation. But if you look at the API docs, create chat completion, um, here under messages, it says the role, one of system, user, assistant, or function. That one, it's a little bit you know, not obvious, but that's where you tell it the result of the function. So it's kind of like the function is speaking to GPT saying, hey, here's the result you're asking for. So we say, this is the function that we called, and then we stringify the actual result. So this is the pile of JSON that the weather API, you know, spat out at us. But first let's uh, improve logging a little bit. There we go. And we run it. So first request there, as expected, got the response, call a function. And second request includes all the history plus the data. Great. So now let's um, actually send it to GPT and let's log the result. All right, we have an answer. Nope, it is currently, it is not currently raining in Stockholm. <laughs> um, and of course we could change the question, right? We can ask any question about weather now, basically. What's the wind in Paris? Why not? Boom. And it's gonna check that and it's blowing at a speed of 2.57 meters per second, etc. So we've kind of given GPT this, this tool and GPT is choosing when it wants to use that tool. However, the way our code is written now, it's pretty limited because let's say the question is, is weather sunnier in Stockholm than in Paris? What's gonna happen? Let's find out. As you can see, the response we got was not the final response. It was just another request to check weather, which kind of makes sense if you think about it because uh, we gave it the tool, get weather, right? And we asked it about Stockholm and Paris. So first it's like, I want to check the weather in Stockholm and then we give it the answer. And then it's like, oh, well, now I want to check the weather in Paris before I can give you an answer, which makes perfect sense. But our code will only handle, you know, one call to get weather. So let's, uh, let's actually fix that. We need to write some kind of loop that just keeps talking to GPT until it's kind of finished doing whatever it needs to do. And uh, how do we know that? How do we know it's finished? Well, it turns out that there is deeply buried <laughs> in the OpenAI documentation, this little thing here. Every response will include a finished reason. That's how we find out if GPT is done and we kind of have an answer. So we need to change our code and make a loop. And this is a perfect situation where, you know, we could do it ourselves, but GPT will do it infinitely faster. Copy all the code, give it to GPT. Here you go, here's a pile of code. And here's what I want to achieve. Use this code as a basis for making a function called call GPT. And then just keep going, keep calling the get weather function whenever requested and then return and log the final message when done. There we go. Let's see if it works. Replace all this and uh, let's just run it. All right, it worked. No, the weather in Stockholm is not sunnier than in Paris. And I won't dig through this in detail, but essentially it's doing what it's supposed to do. It's uh, looping through this, um, talking to GPT, reacting to when GPT wants to call a get, a get weather function and basically just running the loop that I talked about. And at the end, we get a result. So if we look at the code itself, I guess it's probably not rocket science. Um, let's have a quick look. The top is the same. We have our weather function. Here's our, 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 our call GPT function, which is kind of the main function that we're calling from the bottom, right? Call GPT and ask about this thing. Um, let's just do this. It's easier to read. Right. Is the weather sunny in Paris, in, in Stockholm and in Paris? And call GPT is just doing the loop. Send a message to GPT, get a response, check if that response is a request to call get weather. If so, do so and keep looping. Um, and if at any point GPT says we're done, then we're done. We stop, right? So that's it. And we can, of course, change the question. Let's go, uh, give me the weather in the three largest cities in Europe. And yeah, same thing. It does a loop and asks um, for get weather as much as needed and then um, gives us a response. Now this is pretty easy to extend if we want. So let's say we want to be able to save files as well. I'll be lazy and just ask GPT. So this is the kind of stuff where GPT does a really good job because the code is already there. I'm just doing more of the same kind of thing. I pasted in the updated code and let's have a quick look. There's old weather function spec and there's a new one, save the file. 
So uh, nothing complicated really, you know, there's then the file name and there's the content and the helper function. And here we tell GPT that this is now available, right? We have the weather function spec and the save the file function spec. And then over down here, we, we also check, you know, are you trying to call save the file? If so, do it. So this should hopefully work. Let's uh, test it. Uh, we can do, how about this? Let's do GPT-4 um, and let's say, make a file called song.txt, um, which contains a limerick about the current weather in Paris. So calling get weather, calling save the file there, and then we're done. So there should be a file now, and there is song.txt. Okay, not a great limerick, but you get the point. It is a something like maybe a limerick and it is about Paris and it does include the weather. So I hope it's becoming a little more clear what functions are and how you use them. Um, you might be thinking that, wait a sec, this is this is a bunch of code and there's some duplication in there and you know, isn't there some more generic way of doing this? And of, of course there are. We could put all our functions in some kind of array. We could even use maybe reflection so that we don't have to manually write these uh, specifications. There's all kinds of ways you can streamline this, but in this demo, I wanted to show what's actually going on beneath the hood. So that's why I'm kind of typing this out for you. <laughs> but um, I want to show one more kind of use case for functions. So here we we uh, gave GPT functions and it used the functions to generate responses for us. But there is another simpler use case, which is easy, uh, easy to overlook. Let's say um, I want to know what is the main language spoken in the three largest cities in Europe? But I want the answer in a structured format because I want to put it inside a database or maybe send it off to some other API. Let's check what happens by default. So let's ask that specific question. And there's the answer. So this format is arbitrary. GPT just picked something. We want a predictable format if we're going to be able to do something with this in terms of like putting in a database or something. So what can we do about that? One approach is to ask GPT, please give it to me in, in a structured format. Typically, maybe I would write something like this. Okay, let's see if we can do this. We want a JSON format with the field city and language. All right, it looks like it created what I want, but the, just for in case, let's do uh, let's parse this as a JSON and see what it actually is, right? All right, was this what I expected? Not quite. I wasn't expecting this. Um, Maybe I should provide a concrete example, right? That will probably work. But at the end of the day, this isn't really reliable. Even if you give a concrete example, you'll mostly get the right answer, but sometimes not. This is where function calling also comes into play because we could actually tell GPT that it has to use a function. We could say, you have to use set languages in your response. And then we can provide an exact uh, structure for that. So uh, let's try it. So this will actually be simpler code than before. There's no loop involved or anything. It's just one request and one response, and then just save that response essentially. So I've prepared that code and this is what it looks like. We have a set languages function spec. The structure I expect to, re to receive is an object that contains a field called cities, which is an array. And each item in the array is a city name and a language spoken in that city. And uh, those are both required. So again, there's tools to generate this pile of code. But this is what it looks like. Um, I'm essentially defining a JSON schema here. And then uh, in actual code, it's a lot simpler than before. The call GPT function. Um, system says you use a message just like before. What I added now is, well, there's this function, right? Set languages function spec. So I'm saying that here's a function that exists. I'm saying you have to use it <laughs> because that's what this means. And this is also one of those things that's kind of buried in the documentation. But here, if you want to force the model to call a specific function, you can do so by setting function call colon. It, this, is a, this is a parameter that by default is set to auto, which means normally GPT will decide for itself if it should call a function or not. But in this case, the whole point of our, of our request to GPT is that we want it to call this function. So we'll force it. Function call name set languages. And like I said, this is not intuitive. So you know, <laughs> I hope this, this video will help you um, learn it a little faster than, than it took for me. But anyway, we check the response and we expect it to call this function. So if it doesn't, then that's, a, that, that's an error, right? It really should. And then we just return the results. We parse that result and return it. So let's try. What is the main language spoken in the three largest cities in Europe? That's the request I, I send. And I don't need to specify what format I want because we've already said 
over here that we must call that function. So let's try. There we go. There's the result, exactly as expected. I'm now in control of the format, which makes it a lot easier to use GPT as kind of an integration tool. Okay, I think that about sums it up. So what is GPT function calling? What is it useful for? I hope that has become more clear. And I gave you two use cases uh, that have been very useful to me at least, um, augmenting GPT's capabilities and uh, getting structured responses. There are probably tons more, so feel free to add your own suggestions um, in, the, in the comments. Okay, thanks for listening. Bye.